So at this time, folks, with no further ado, Pai 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 Li Mayoko, Professor, the one, the only, from Maui, Kalekua Kael!
because it's believed that it is only through education, the knowledge of self and the truth, that we will be empowered to do what is necessary to engage with those who want to maintain and continue the oppression of our people, the desecration of our sacred sites, and really putting us like zoo animals in their petting zoo to keep us under their control. But see, it's a new dawn, it's a new day for our people. We've risen from the darkness through this education to remember, to recall because we will restore our true humanity. And it's important for us all to understand we are a dominated people. Let's tell the truth. But the only people that can free us from our domination is not the dominator. Aye. The only one that can free us from our domination is us. Yo. Yo. All of us here. Yo. All of us working together Mokahi. We must have as a great book says. We must have the faith and belief. As Papa Mao Piainu, Brother Junior over there, who taught us, if I have courage, it is because I have the faith in the teachings of my ancestors. Now, unfortunately, for too much of our people, this faith was broken because of miseducation and uneducation. We all know, 125 years ago, our people understood and knew what it was to be a Kanaka in their own homeland. But unfortunately, because of the greed and the sickness of supremacy, those who came to take over through the force of the gun pointing at our people, were able to manipulate the situation after the invasion. And the situation, of course, was to rob from us our identity, to erase from us our consciousness as a Lahui Kanaka, and to develop in us the sense of idea of being inferior to those who came to conquer us. But I'm here to say, those days are over and long gone. Our people have risen and will continue to rise. Whether you are Kanaka or Ivi or Kiyaina, and we have been here for 2,000 years, or you are a recent transplant who've come to live amongst our people, and what I always say, if you are serious about the future of Hawaii, it doesn't matter if you purple, green, yellow, or pink. It doesn't matter if you got dreadlocks, long hair, bowler head, whatever it might be. We are all in the same vow. That vow we must re-come and deal. But see, the miseducation has taught us somehow that it's not our vow. In fact, somebody else knows better on how to ho'okele and navigate this va'a. But see, we understand because of re-education, remembering, revitalization of our cultural and historical understandings, that it's just a matter of time when the new generation will take re-control of this va'a so we can become masters of our own destiny. But in order to do that, we must listen to like the words of Brother Angie that he spoke earlier. Those in charge, including the collaborators and the compradors, let's tell the truth. Some of our people are in service to the dominators. They fatten their pockets and are paying. They have nice, beautiful, gated community houses while the majority of our people struggle and sadly, many of our women and children still live 
under the blue tarps on our beaches. This is not a normal situation. This is a situation which has been put upon our people. And we only have two choices. Either we succumb and submit and stay silent and not fight back and go in the corner or cry or we say no more. We are Kanaka. Oini to this Aina. The people of this land who have come forward to reclaim our destiny as real human beings in our homeland for us to decide and determine our future. But in order to do that, we must commit ourselves to do, as Malcolm X says, whatever is necessary to push us into the future. We cannot allow fear to guide us. Like in the words of Kamehameha, when he stood at the Puonia and the Battle of Iao, when he took the sovereignty from my kupuna, but he said, let's move forward young brothers and drink the bitter waters because there's no turning back. Struggle is never sweet. Struggle is never easy. Struggle isn't something that just occurs. But struggle is the key to progress as the great Frederick Douglass said. If there is no struggle, there is no progress. The state capital and those who impose those laws upon our people and those who justify the kind of violence upon our people who justify those kinds of programs that continue to exploit and destroy our environment must be challenged. We have no choice. We are engaged in a battle of survival. But I'm not here just to survive. As been said, we are here to thrive. This has always been part of our destiny. We are not Johnny come ladies, as I say, upon this earth. We know our kupuna, who sailed across the largest body of water to come to this place, the most remote place in the world, were special people. They were fearless the most innovative, and the ability to adapt to the situation provided our kupuna with those tools of strength to create a society unlike any other upon this earth. Whereas if you look at the history, we gotta understand not just what happens in 1893 or in 1897 or 1898, but to understand, for example, like in 1843, we must tell the story and history of great leaders like Timoteo Ha'aliliu who led a contingent. Sadly, if you get a chance to ever read his story, it's quite apparent that he understood he may not come back to his most beloved land oh. and family, but he understood that if our people were to survive and thrive into the future, we had to engage in the rest of the world fearlessly, and they travel across to Europe with Sir George Simpson and William Richards, and they're able, as genius as he is, to create the greatest powers in the world at that time, to recognize Hawaii's status, the Hawaiian kingdom, as an independent and nation state. This is an important thing to remember, because when you hear people talking about, oh, Hawaiians trying to get sovereignty. See, that's part of the miseducation. Sovereignty had already been gotten back in 1843. We're not trying to get that sovereignty. We're trying to get back our minds. See, that's the question. Our minds is really what's most important. As the great Kwai Puna Prejean used to say, don't worry about the chains on your legs. Pay attention to the chains on your brains. Because the change in our brains is what keeps our people under the thumb of oppression. And there's a couple of things I wanted to mention in the struggle, just to talk about things that are out there. For anybody, all of us, you, me, and even better, we, 
can participate in those things to challenge directly the powers to be about our right. We have no need to really to argue to them to declare that we are human beings. It is up to us to believe ourselves as being human beings and demand we should be treated as human beings. We can look at Maui. Let me just talk about Maui. We talk about the protection of our EOE, I mean our EV and our sacred sites. And one of the things I say, if we cannot protect our sacred sites, don't talk to me about us being free. Don't talk to me about the blessings of this United States of American system upon our people. Our EV, even to this day, are being dug up. And if you're familiar with the story of Kakani Lua in Wailuku, Navai Eha, the sand mining that occurs, literally, one of the most important places, but the remains of our ancestors were put into the ground forever. The illegal sand mining continues on to this day with that sand with the remains of our kupuna, and I'm not talking about a few dozen, I'm talking at this point where hundreds, if not thousands of our kupuna have been dug up in these sand mines, taken to this island, turned into cement to construct the rail project on this island. Wow. That's the evil of our kupuna in that rail project. And we're supposed to sit around and stand quiet and depend on the state of Hawaii government and Governor Ige to protect our humanity. We're not fools. We understand that we must stand up and rise and speak. We can talk about in Hotel Hanamaui, where Chavasa Hotel, who took over the control of Hotel Hanamaui, is currently digging up our ancestral remains in order to develop the sewer facilities for the rich and famous in Hanamaui. This is ongoing to this day. You know, and my cousin, Kai, went in there, following his now, jumped in the hole, stopped that project, and they locked him up for 48 hours in that process. And his sacrifice is something that helped to wake up the consciousness, consciousness of our people. But fortunately, at this point in time, the project has stopped temporarily. But the point being, my point is to understand, you don't need an army to affect change for our people. What you need is the determination and the courage, like our kupuna and the aloha for our people to do whatever is necessary. And finally, let me just talk a little bit about my current case that I'm dealing with right now. On my second arrest in regards to the Halakala telescope development, <laughs> brought into court, going through the process again of being charged with disorderly conduct for putting our bodies in front of some trucks. We got arrested, taken in, charged. And in my defense, as per se, I decided on this step, of course, like I've done in other cases, is to defend myself. So whereas, in my defense, to best demonstrate that we are, as Kanaka, are not gone, we're still here, not just surviving, but demanding our recognition of humanity. I demand myself to defend myself in the language of this land. Unfortunately, on Maui, the prosecution department on Maui put in a motion a few weeks back 
which demanded that I not be able to defend myself in the Hawaiian language. That in fact, I had to defend myself in the language of our oppressor and the settler. And what do you think I did? Of course, I kept on speaking in our mother tongue. Oh, Maui, Hawaii. So at this point, we will engage on January 24th, 10 a.m. But I will demand that I continue to defend myself in the Hawaiian language. I'm not sure what the judge is going to do. Maybe he'll just ignore my speaking. Or he might hold me in contempt of court. Either way, it's a win. Either way, I refuse to submit. Either way, I refuse to succumb. Either way, I will not allow them to dehumanize us as a people. I do not have to ask for their permission. In fact, I refuse to beg them for this right. But this is the same action that all of us, in our own way, in our own struggles, in our own dealings in life in Hawaii, that we all can do. Because it will take an army, not an army of people running around with guns, but an army of conscious Kanaka who understand our history, who understand our culture, and even better, understand that we must stand. The time is now. We can no longer allow the settler to determine our future. Because if they do, we will disappear upon this earth. But I'm not afraid. Just like our kupuna, who set sail 2,000 years ago, I'm not afraid because those teachings and that knowledge and that courage that they had is the same that we all carry to this day. We, the Lahui Kanaka, will move forward. We, the Lahui Kanaka, we become the masters of our own destiny. Mahalo Nui. Pai Pai Lima everybody. Pai Pai Lima Kako. Kale.